Well, greetings, folks. Another week of Weekly Kingdom Outlook here with Boston Lewis. I'm so glad that you're watching this. And we're going to kind of bounce off what we talked about last week, which was callings versus titles. And today we're going to talk about magnifying your ministry and not your calling. And I'm going to talk about how what, what that looks like, how you do that. Um, and so that you are uh, protecting your heart, which is the number one key to some of this stuff is you always guarding your heart and not letting the nuances of pride, the nuances of this world, uh, the nuances of social media to rob you of what God actually has in store for you long term. So to do that, you have to uh, know how to navigate some of these things, especially young kids coming up. You grow up in a social media world and um, and I and and you are called, and I want to say this: like we're we're here to pass that baton as we're still running the race, but at the same time, you know, our job. Listen, if we run in a way that you can never catch up, or we never help you catch up to us, we cannot pass the baton. So we we cannot hold back a generation um, because we're afraid they're going to take our place. They actually are designed to. What happens in a relay? Well, you know, the one in front passes the baton and he stops running and the other one goes on and carries it farther. And that's that's the kingdom. And that's what we're here doing. And a lot of times um, there's resistance from above and there's pride from beneath. So let's see if we can navigate out of that and uh, help us do that. If you would, uh, I want to invite you to lewisdcn.com. I got some things going on there starting July 11th. I got... Uh, uh, weekly Tuesday night eight week course going on. It's actually a mentoring course. We're going to be talking about Melchizedek in the courtrooms and stuff like that. You can join that. Uh, also, we're on all the platforms. We're on Rumble. We're on YouTube. We're on um, Facebook, on the Gate Church, and on um, Lewis D. Santa Ministries. Both both of those, okay, on all three sites. Plus, you can download on the app stores the Gate Church of Jacksonville app, and you'll get all these videos. They're all at, at, right at your hand and stuff like that. So, and would you do me a favor? Would you subscribe to our channel? It really helps us out. We're trying to build up those algorithms. And if you like the video, like it, and then share the video maybe on your social media. Help us out with that. It'd be awesome. Um, we are trying to expand our footprint and it helps with the algorithms and if you believe it's something good if you like the video maybe it's good for somebody else and uh it will help them so great if you can do that for so us i'm titling this one magnifying your ministry not your calling because i feel that sometimes many people are trying to magnify now they you do this subtly i'm gonna tell you how they do this subtly you know if you do this you're not really a prophet what they're saying is i'm a prophet and i don't do those things and let me explain how you magnify your ministry, not your calling. If your whole thing is for everyone to know you're an apostle, that you're a prophet, that you're a teacher, a pastor, whatever. If that's your goal, they need to know. They need to know I'm an apostle. I find that you don't actually have to share that. I don't have that on my business cards, wherever my business cards are at. Um, here's one of my business cards. I don't have anywhere on my business cards do I put Apostle Lewis. And um, the reason for that is um, I, I don't promote my calling. It's not what I'm promoting. It's not what I'm going to uh, magnify. My calling is as an apostle, but my ministry is what I rather magnify. So this becomes a problem when you feel like people didn't recognize you. I, I, I've, I've watched prophets who they give a word and the church didn't receive their word and they're upset because didn't they know I was a prophet? And the problem with that is um, saying you're a prophet and having wrong words isn't going to help you. Saying you're not a, not saying you're a prophet and having an on word is going to magnify your ministry. And, you know, when we were growing up in the Lord, I, I was... I, I pursued being, you know, I was with a spiritual father for, and a mother, really, from 94 until 2004, 10 years. But when I got ordained uh, in, you know, New Year's Eve on 2002 and New Year's Day, because we went over into the night, until this January 1st, 2003, when I got ordained, that was when I was allowed to say I was a prophet. 
Now I'm going to give you a couple instances. I never introduced myself as an apostle or prophet. I just don't. It's uncomfortable for me, and this might have part of my personality, but I also feel when I met Bill Johnson, Bill didn't say, hi, I'm Apostle Bill. He didn't even say, I'm Pastor Bill. You know, and um, when I met him, I said, hey, my name is Lewis. I, I think sometimes we want people to know our calling. And I, and I want to tell you that that's not really what you want people to know, even though you think it's going to open doors for you. It's not. It might open doors, but those doors that are going to open up to you are going to be people that are going to be flattering. They're not going to really be a substance you're looking for. It's not going to be actually what you want to push forward into. So I want to tell you the differences of that. Now, I'm going to tell you a funny story. When I got ordained, um, I was still doing the School of the Prophets at Randy. I'm an ordained prophet. I don't introduce myself as a prophet and at all, but we were using facilities of another church on Tuesday nights for the School of the Prophets. Randy was uh, in charge. I was the co-teacher with Randy. And this pastor would come in, and he was now an apostle because he was going out. And when he'd walk in, he'd say, hi, Lou. And I'd say, let's just call him Joe. Hi, Joe. And he didn't say, he'd go, hey, how you doing? Hey, Lou, how you doing? I go, hey, Joe, how you doing? So I'm having lunch with Randy about two weeks later. And Randy goes, um, Joe's upset with you. And I said, what about? And he said, you didn't call him apostle when you greeted him when he came in two weeks ago. I said, really? I said, well, he didn't greet me as prophet. And Randy went, Lou. And when you know me, Randy, I don't play that religious stuff. And Randy knew, like, this is not going to go good. So next week, sure enough, I told you, tell him to call me prophet. When he greets me, he calls me by prophet. I'll call him by apostle. What he sows, let him reap it. I don't need him to call me prophet. But if he needs people to call them by that, then show that same respect to other people then. I'm a little, look, I am an antagonizer of dead religion. And it, it, it I am, because that's just religious to me. And so sure enough, the next time he came in, he goes, hey, Lou. And I go, hey, Joe. And Randy's sitting right there. And Randy just shook his head. And if you need people to greet you as apostle, as prophet, as whatever, um, why? Well, they need to have a sign of respect. For who? Here's what I tell people. They go, what should I call you? Lewis is really good. However, if calling me Lewis somehow causes you to lose honor for who I am, then call me pastor, call me apostle, do what you need to do for you. But I don't need it. But if it helps you to maintain reverence of the ministry or of the of the anointing, that's fine. If I, you know, I called, I told you, I called last video, I said, I called Bill Sir. I called Randy, my spiritual father. I called him Pops and Pop, Papa and Pops. And, you know, I didn't, I, I, he, he was my spiritual father. And Kathy Letcher's wife, who was an ordained prophet, I called her Kathy. I didn't walk into her house and go, hey, prophets. I didn't do that. Me and my wife didn't do that. We don't, we don't do that in our own house. But what they knew is they knew, they knew the respect we had for them and the honor. See, there was not an issue between us of honor. When I met, uh, when I met Benny Hinn, I called him sir. I didn't call him evangelist. You know what I mean? I, I didn't call him any of that. I just said, hey, sir, great to meet you. Okay? And I will call him sir unless he says, hey, call me Benny. You know? Uh, Rodney, I call him Pastor Rodney. Because that's what everyone around him called him. So I just took that. But when I played golf with him, it was Rodney. There's no, there's no love lost in that. Rodney, here's the thing about Benny, Rodney. Bill Johnson, and you'll notice about when I meet when I say hello to Chris, I go, Hey Chris, how you doing? His wife Kathy, hey, you know what Chris knows? Chris knows who he is. Chris knows that he's a prophet. And if you need to magnify your calling so that people know your calling, then the problem is in here. Now here's how you fix it. Magnify your ministry. Now you might ask, Lou, how do we, uh, how do we do that? 
Let's talk about what Paul says here. Romans eleven thirteen. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry, not my calling. He says, look, yeah, I'm an apostle to Gentiles, but I'm, I'm going to magnify my ministry. I'm going to explain what that does and how you handle the pressure of becoming known in ministry. How do, how do you get known? Well, how did I do it? Now, look, I know there's people more well-known than me. Number one, um, everyone wants to fulfill their calling in ministry with God. Let's just assume that fact. Let's assume that you're called of God. Let's say you're called to be an apostle, called to be an apostle, called to be a pastor, whatever, teacher, whatever it is. You want people, and I'm talking about the kingdom. You want people to know there's something here of substance. And I want it. How do I get that out? How do I share that? How do I... Uh, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to tell you how I did it. Um, every opportunity the Lord gave me to minister, I did. That was number one simple. In other words, every time that, you know, when I was with Randy asked me to pray, when I was ushering, which was some of the most fun time I had as ushering, because I got so touched in Rodney Howard Brown's ministry in 1993 that I walk and I can I could I was able to move in the joy and I could pray for people and impart. And I had, I have such faith for impartation, receiving and giving, by the way. Receiving and giving. And um here's how we're gonna do it. <clears throat> Number one, it is right and righteous to desire to bear fruit for our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is absolutely 100% righteous and just. That we sit there and say, you saved our lives. And all I want to do the rest of my life is bear fruit for you and your kingdom. And that is a godly thing. That is an absolutely, that's what Jesus came to do. Jesus says, I've come to fulfill the will of my Father. And so that's what we're here to do. There's, there is nothing evil about that. And don't let, listen to me, don't let anyone kill that fire. Okay. Do not let anyone kill the fire of it. Because I've had people sit there and my call to preach. I had someone once say, it's a preacher's itch. And I was very young in the Lord and and I, you know, and I found out I was called about six, seven months into being saved back in 1990. June, around June 20th, 1990 was the first time I preached. So I've been preaching 33 years. And it was my father-in-law said, man, there's a calling of God in your life. He was a pastor. And he said, there's a call of God in your life. And he said, you you need to go ahead and preach in a couple weeks. And that's, that's how I started preaching. Crazy, isn't it? Just absolutely insane that way. And so what I don't want you to do is, is uh, feel that you have to tell everyone you're called to preach because that's not what I did. Matter of fact, folks, I only preach like once or twice a year because I was still in air traffic control. I was so wet behind the ears. I didn't feel I was ready. Okay. And when God called me to be a prophet, I didn't tell anybody, including my wife. I didn't tell anybody. And then to my wife's amazement, mine, every time we went to a prophetic meeting, we were prophesied over and over and over and over again about my calling in the Lord. Okay. So you don't need to do it. Here's what I'll tell you. I didn't tell everyone I was called to be a prophet. The prophets decreed it. I didn't have to. And I feel sometimes, listen, I feel sometimes there's so much pressure on young ministers today to, you know, they got on their Facebook page, apostle so-and-so and prophet so-and-so. There's such an absolute need for so many young people today to, to by the way, let me explain this to you, but to to everyone to know who they're, what their calling is. And let me tell you something. That's an orphan spirit. If you need everyone to know that you're an apostle and a prophet or whatever, that's an orphan spirit. It's not a godly spirit. It's an orphan spirit. Okay? And so don't fall into the trap. Who you are is in Christ. Your calling is also in Christ. 
but you ha your identity, my identity is not an apostle. My identity is as a son. And I get that through the, the blood of Jesus, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the word of God, the fellowship of Jesus, the, the, the love of the Father. And I don't get that through doing. I get that through being with him. All right? If you need to magnify that you're a prophet, let everyone know that you're a prophet. You know, and I don't mean, I don't mean, um, well, there's ways that people could do this that is to let you know this was from a prophet. Okay, now, I think I talked about it really needs to be someone from the fivefold that ordains you and, and not just you saying you're a prophet. That would really help there, okay? Um, because I think sometimes we just self-call ourselves, all right? But let's, let's do this by the Spirit. We are to magnify our ministry, not our calling. And when we when we magn we try to magnify our, our calling, we're trying to be known. Expert, you see this in the media, expert this, expert that, right? But if we spend time with the Holy Spirit, Jesus and the Father, um, our our fruit will actually come forth. Okay? Fruit will actually come forth and it will magnify. It will literally magnify our our ministry. Okay, so here's how you uh, here's a couple of scriptures I want to give you. Okay, and I, I really do want to give you these. And it's Galatians six nine it says, "And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart." And another one's very similar. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself, he'll do the exalting. You don't grow weary, just keep being faithful, and in due, sign, due time, it'll reap. It'll, it'll come to fruition. So for me, um, I, I, I ushered. And folks, I ushered, and I knew I was called to preach. I knew all that in my heart. And, I, and sometimes I would sit there and say, Lord, when? And, but I would never exalt myself because, number one, I leaned the other way, where some people will rather exalt themselves and have to dial it back. I lean the other way where I'm an introvert, I'm shy. Um, and so, believe it or not, and so uh, I've had to give up who I was for who he is and go, I can't afford that. But I've had to push myself out of that shyness, okay, to voice what I have, knowing that what God's given me is valuable and being willing to stand up to it, okay? Um but if we abide with them, in John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. You will be my disciples. Now, I want to tell you something. How do you magnify your ministry? I prophesied. So, let me tell you how I magnify my ministry. I'm in a meeting. The leader of the meeting has had Rodney Howard Brown in that night to speak. The leader of the meeting said, Lou, would you go up and take up an offering for him and then pray for him? I said, okay. Went up and took up the offering. Then I said, stretch forth your hands. We're going to pray for Rodney. And so then I laid my hands on Rodney and I prayed. But when I pray, I prophesied. And I prophesied over Rodney. Now, I know the fear of that is that Rodney will either go, <laughs> that is not of God, because Rodney will do that. So will Benny Hinn. It's not of God. You know, try again. Rodney thanked me and went up to the man who invited me. He told me this later. Do, did not do it in front of me. He said, Rodney said, oh, my God, that guy is so called to the ministry. He's so called of God. See, I didn't have to magnify my calling. The Lord did. How did I do that? I was just doing what God has called me to do, which is the minister, to prophesy, to lay hands on the sick. If you do this, your ministry gets called. Look, them calling me apostle is not going to make the power flow as much. You go, why? Well, they might call me an apostle because I desire it, but not because they believe it. Do you understand the difference? Honor is important, so don't get me wrong. But if I'm demanding it, is it really honor? See, if you demand honor, honor loses its value because honor is something in the heart 
flatteries with the lips. Okay. Honor is something that comes from deep within where I go, I recognize your value, who you are, and I honor that in you. Flattery is, yeah, when we go over here, you remember, <laughs> remember the Seinfeld episode with Maestro? His name was Bob. He was the uh, conductor of the policeman's benevolent uh, orchestra. It was like probably like a, it was like a 15 piece orchestra, but he required everyone to call him maestro. He wanted everyone to know he was a maestro. That's like everyone going, that's like you going around going, no, you need to call me apostle or you need to call me prophet. Don't magnify your calling. How, you know, you could tell prophets, by, you know, you could tell apostles. You can, you can let the fruit magnify you. When I go overseas, when I go travel, I have people come up to me and tell me my calling because they saw my ministry and then the spirit, whatever. I don't go in there and go, apostle this, prophet this. As a matter of fact, I don't need all that. I really don't. I, it's not something. Now, you might need it so that you receive. Here's the difference. I'm going to tell you this story again. I'm walking up the stairs of the church, January 7, 2007, the Holy Spirit said to me, you must receive the apostle, speaking of Bill Johnson, in the name of an apostle. Bill didn't do it. The Holy Spirit was saying, get your heart in line. You're about to receive from one of my apostles. But Bill did not do that. If Bill had said, before I lay hands on you, you have to acknowledge me as an apostle, that would have been wrong. Do you understand the difference? And Bill, it's hard to find anywhere to build. Now, I've been in leadership meetings and stuff where Bill, they, you know, Bill knows he's an apostle. So Chris knows he's a prophet. And, and so... But you know what I'm saying? If Bill had done that, I would have complied. But would my heart have been in it? But when the, don't get upset because the Spirit doesn't tell him either. If the Spirit hadn't said anything, Bill wouldn't have gotten upset. I was still just as hungry, maybe. But what that did is it really, it, it just really, what the Holy Spirit wasn't trying to tell me, oh yeah, by the way, he's an apostle. I was going there. The Lord sent me there to have Bill lay hands on me for my apostolic calling. And so he was positioning me saying, look, you're going to receive apostle to apostle. Here's something that's going to kick off in your life. After four years of prayer, here's what's about to happen. But it wasn't for Bill's benefit. That was all for my benefit. Okay? Understand the difference. And understand when God reveals to you that that person's a prophet or that person's an apostle or that person's, he's doing it for your benefit. He's not doing it for you to flatter them. He's doing it for you to get your heart in line. Okay, now, but you want to focus on magnifying your ministry. If you are an evangelist, evangelize. Don't tell everyone that you're a winner of souls. Just go out and win souls. Trust me, if you go out and win souls, people are going to know it. If you're a pastor and you're one who brings comfort and love and teaches people and disciples people in Christ, teaches them how to get clean and all that, does inner healing, all those things that pastors might do, helps out in the church, magnify it, do it. If you're a teacher, then study that you might teach the word of God flawlessly. If you're a prophet, then do what a prophet does. Now, these are things prophets do, but prophets also, all these fivefold ministries are government offices, so they are equipping the saints, right? So that's what we do. Fivefold ministry is given to equip the saints. So equip, this is what we're doing. We're equipping them. How are we equipping them? We're teaching them. We're helping them. We're, we're, we're getting them to move farther in Christ. If, it, if, you're, if, you're, if your ministry is healing, then lay hands on the sick. Don't spend a half an hour talking about how you're a healing minister. Talk about healing. Heal the sick. Pray for the sick. And this is really important because social media has a way of... Um, uh, of, uh, of I see people all the time. And uh, one of the ways that we do it, one of the ways that we magnify our calling over ministry is, you know, that person's really, I'll tell you, prophets aren't those who do this. Now, what, what's the conclusion? I do this. Don't, don't magnify. And by the way, don't boast, don't boast in what the Lord does through you in a sense of like always promoting yourself. It's just not good. It's just not good. Promote the Lord. You got to do it in a humble way. 
because you can get caught up in it, that you want the clicks, you want the likes, you want people to look at you. And that's a dangerous place. Because when they start looking at you, they're going to look at you and they're going to find your flaws. They're going to find anything that they can find that they can get their you know, talons in there and rip them apart. So you don't really want to do that. And there's a right spirit that we can share the things that God has done through our ministries without, listen, without boasting in our calling itself, but magnifying our ministry. Because you listen to me, as I said in the last video, if you haven't seen it, go look at 112, episode 112. I want to let you know again, you have a ministry. By the way, you also have a calling. It's not, it might not be fivefold, but you have one. God, number one, has called us all to himself. But let me say this. We have all been given a ministry. Magnify it. Be faithful with it. Pray about your ministry. Pray into your ministry how you might bear more fruit for the Lord. And look, it doesn't matter if they know you as an apostle, a prophet. What really matters is that you bear fruit for the kingdom and you will be the disciples of Jesus. That is what you want in the long run. I hope this blesses you. I always put your comments and stuff down below, whatever platform you're watching this. I love you deeply. I hope this benefits you today and you have a wonderful day. God bless.